Don't watch me, watch Nolzine TV. It's the best video ever and subscribe to it. What's up, man? It's Rooftop Ray, if you hear me. You are now watching Nola Zing TV. You hear it? Okay. All right, Ray. Also, tell everybody where you're from. New Orleans, Louisiana. You hear me? From Mid City across the now. I don't, don't, don't worry about the hood shit. Because I go from the four wall to the six wall to the across the canal, like I said. You hear me? You might catch me all the way across the water. For yeah. real, for real. All right. So tell the people. G Block, hold up, G Block. Bank Street, yeah. Please, my last Oh, now you want to talk about the hood now? <laughs> All right, so tell everybody, I'm like, when you started making music? Uh, 2001, 2002. I took some money that I had, and I was cool to get a car painted, went to Guitar Center, decided to buy a beat machine, and shit, here we are, like, years later. Um, so, so tell the people, I'm like, more, I'm like, about that, like, I'm like, what you, I'm like, making beats too? Yeah, 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 I, I definitely make beats too. I started out with Rock, rock Shop Production with me and my boy Floyd Gray. Uh, we actually started out with Dizzy, with uh, Rob Smooth, we did some for, um, we did a couple of tracks for them, then we did like 504 versus 404, uh, with Big Cat Records back in, uh, like, 03, 04, and we actually was about to start doing some stuff with Slim before he got killed on some stuff with, uh, with my boy Floyd, he really was in with Slim during the time. Okay. Um, so, I'm like, do you have any projects coming up? Yeah, we got Hood Celebrity 2 coming up. Hood Celebrity 1 already out. It's on uh, all major platforms, you know what I'm saying? Like Tidal, iTunes, whatever you can name, it's on now. Y'all go get that too, if you ain't already got it. Also, do you have any um, features on that? No, no features. Well, they only got Chopper. Chopper the only one on that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Chopper the only one. Well, you know, we got him on Learn to Love, and he on uh, Loving on You. I mean, Chopper, that's, 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 that's the homie, man. Okay, so tell everybody, I'm like, I'm like, what do you enjoy most about being a music artist? And tell the people, I'm like, what do you hate most about being a music artist? Um, the thing I love about being a music artist is you can use your music to help other people, to motivate other people and tell your story as well. The shit that I don't like, that a lot of people that you kind of put your trust in turn it back on you, try to use you. And it's like, they know you have the talent, but at the same time, won't support you because they, you know what I'm saying? It's afraid you're gonna get ahead of them, like on some shit. That's just from my experience. It's a whole lot of other things, but that's just something that I just, you know, off the top of my head, what I don't like about it. Opposed to like, we all can make money, like we all could like really be successful because it's music. Like if a person cleaning up, like, <laughs> they probably not gonna wanna listen to Young Jesus the whole time they cleaning up, so they gonna have a variety yeah, of people. Chill. Yeah, you could, <laughs> but I'm just saying like, you have a variety of music that you're gonna listen to if you're on a long road trip or something. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I kind of look at it. Okay. So growing up, I'm like, who influenced you for to start making music? Oh, so it's just now Tupac. Uh, I had a partner in the hood, Sleepy. Uh, Sleep. Shots out to Breed of Life Records. That's that's the home team. You hear me? That's that's, that's family right there. But I had like crazy. You know what I'm saying? My partner crazy. He was with Rough Ever and Breed of Life. That was the same same little group, same little circle. I really had some partners in the hood like that really was on their shit. Okay. So tell the people, I'm um, like, how did you come up with your name? <laughs> oh, because you know, I stay down in the CBD. Used to hang on the rooftop and smoke my cigars all the time. Well, matter of fact, my dog Glenn. A lot of people, a lot of people, Glenn Mess. Shouts out to Glenn Mess, man. It's like my brother, you heard me. A lot of people ask me that too. And it's funny that we was in we was in Atlanta, like for Saints in Atlanta weekend. And he was telling me, man, you need to change your name. And really, I was just bullshitting, because we always bullshitting. I've been like, calling Rosie. Really. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. So he was like, man, you gotta change your name. We sitting up there with this bullshit around. He was like, man, you gotta name, fuck that, change the rooftop rape. And I was like, bullshitting around. And I was like, from now on, call it rooftop rape. And that shit just stuck. And my dog just like made history with it, awesome shit. Okay. Um, so I have a funny question for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so have you ever been catfished? Uh. <laughs> I don't know, bro, because I don't really fall for that shit. Okay? And so you never like saw a woman that looked good on Instagram and she didn't look like that? Honestly, person? I don't pay them no mind, dog. And I always been like that. Because at the end of the day, I always worry about if a bitch trying to set me up. So I don't really meet no bitches on no, online, to be honest with you. Now, I have saw some bitches who I, 
like seen, but then I see in Walmart, they'd be like, I know you saw me, but I'd be like, well, damn, that wasn't the same fuel tan makeup that you had on. No disrespect, but I'm just saying, like, before as catfishing, I don't really meet bras online like that. Okay, so I have another funny question for you. Right. So you saw me, I want to know what you was doing at this time <laughs> when you made quarantine pussy. Oh, quarantine <laughs> pussy. I don't even know what I was doing. You weren't in there? No, I wasn't. Uh, I guess it was a situation to where uh, I just thought about being with one. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, you hear me? But it was, I mean, I was just trying to like, I, that's, that's the type of stuff I do. I use certain situations and just like try to make it positive, try to just make it out of a positive situation. So I was like, fuck it, we stuck in this bitch. Let's, let's go in on and make some music about it. So that's how we came up with Quarantine Pussy. All right. So, Kate, okay, I have another question for you. So, um, so for the people who don't know, I'm like, tell them, I'm like, what your relationship um, was like with the, um, sorry, I can't get out right. So for the people who don't know, I'm like, tell them, I'm like, what your relationship um, was like with um, a Young Greatness. Oh man, that was my dog, man, that was my dog. We always bumped heads, but that was my dog. And um, actually, I can remember one time, it was him and Deuce in the group, can't remember the group name. And Deuce wound up getting a deal, getting a single deal. And for some reason, I couldn't understand how he made that decision without greatness. I, I, I don't even know. But that's when they were dealing with the architects. That's with my boy John and them, like, that's it's, it's all one big family. And um, that nigga really wanted to just give up, like, on some shit. So I was like, well, look, this is what we're going to do. I had a beat machine, so I'm like, this is what we're going to do. There was, he was still signed to another dude. I can't remember that dude's name. He wound up getting killed before the storm, like, maybe a couple of days before the storm, before we were all supposed to evacuate. But um, he let us use the studio, man. He was like, he really ain't want to fuck I talked to the nigga. I'm like, dog, look. I mean, it is what it is, it's fucked up, but nigga, we gonna keep going. We wind up going that bitch just straight, we probably, that nigga probably recorded about five songs, and that nigga never looked back. He was like, fuck it, but at that point, he wanted to quit, but that nigga was like, fuck it. I mean, he went and did a bid, but after he came on, that nigga hit the ground and ran it, and never looked back. But yeah, that was that was my dude, man, and actually that day when he got killed, we was together at uh, Pelican B, and I was disappointed like with that nigga, man. I'm like, man, you had all your partners there, like, Nigga, whoever needed, you know, to come meet you, like, nigga, they could have met you around there, like, but I don't know, I don't know about that nigga, but, you know, it's all love, man. I miss my dude, though. It's all love. Okay. So, far as, far as, far as your career, do you feel like you had to move, I'm like, out your city? I'm like, what's your music career? I'm like, reach a certain milestone? Um, not, not really, but it's all in how you carry yourself. That's the most important thing. But you have to know who you have around you as well, too. Like, because I look at people like Currency. Currency don't really have no issues, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, Currency don't hang in the places that I hang in, uh, places that I go. In the trenches, so, huh? <laughs> I mean, like, second lines and all that. Like, you ain't going to see Currency at no second line. Like, you know, you ain't Kermit. Gonna see me at second line. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I go to all the hood shit because, you know, that's who support me, you know what I'm saying? Like, but. It's all how you carry yourself, but me personally, I think once I get to a certain point, I I, I probably will remove myself, but I still come back and chill. But I know it wouldn't be like, oh, I'm just gonna stay in the waters. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. Cause I just saw too many of my partners. You know, the moment they didn't got up ahead, shit, them niggas out of here. So nah, he ain't gonna really catch me like that. <laughs> but I come back and chill, catch me a second line, and you know, chill with my partners in the hood every now and then. But you and I still do it. Yeah, I mean, but juvenile is juvenile. You, know <laughs> you moved to Ray. Yeah, I moved to Ray. We ain't, yeah, you know. I mean, it's love. I'm always let her hood, but you gotta know where you stand at. You know, what I mean? you gotta be smart, especially when you the bag. You gotta make, you gotta make the right decisions. Okay, got a question for you. Mm. Tell your fans something about you on um, that you don't show on your social media. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to show you. show everything on social media? No, I don't. I sure would think you had a job. No. I, I, <laughs> you told I, me you had a job. <laughs> yeah, he don't believe that, but yeah. He <laughs> like, tell I me all the stuff that I do that I don't post on social media. Like, at the end of the day, social media for entertainment, but you can't show everybody your hand because you can't let a motherfucker know how you move. Okay. So, so please explain 
How much the I, most? You think I'm timing? <laughs> you know so, you have a job. So please explain. I'm like the most. I'm like memorable concert performance um, that you had, and I'm telling people why. Ooh, I can name it off the top of my head. I was living in Atlanta. It was this club figure eight off of Gretchen Road. Gucci man had just got out of jail. Uh, it probably was like the second time I want to see. <laughs> Bro, this bitch was packed from from the club all the way to Twenty Eights, no lie. And um, we, we like we, I was pushing like uh, stupid clean. I had like I used to go by Rage the Track of Holic. Y'all can pull that up on iTunes too. I got a, a mixtape. You a lot of different people, right? it, waiting. Yeah, because I used to do beats at the time too. Right. I ain't really, you know, so. I mean, at the end of the day, like you have to reinvent yourself so so long. Like that shit wouldn't sound like right in 2020. Rage the track, all oh, they'd be like, "What are you talking about? What's your DJ or something?" But anyway, yeah, man, that was like one of my you know memorable moments of uh, it was early rap career. But I had done a lot of stuff like even with OJ the Juice. I don't know why I haven't been released yet, but man, Atlanta really, really, it was a good experience. I can say, it really was. Also, I mean, do you ever plan on going back? Most definitely, I still go back. Like that's family. Like I, I still have my, my, you know, my bridges in the tank. I ain't burning any, you know, no bridges in Atlanta. Like that's that's my family. That's that's second home right there, man. Rest in peace to my boy Trouble. We just lost him last week. You know what I'm saying? You know, big man, hold your head up, bitch. You know, we gonna hold it down for him. Okay. So, um, so what's your advice on um, to a younger artist um, that's trying to follow on um, in your footsteps? Never give up. Always keep going. Never let nobody tell you what you can't do. Never be discouraged. Always be consistent. And always believe in you. You know what I'm saying? Because this shit is a journey. Like, it don't happen overnight. Some people get lucky, but it don't happen overnight. And keep good people around you. Keep good people around you. And uh, just keep good, good positive vibes around you as well. Because trouble is easy to get get into and hard to get out of. Okay. So I'm um, like, has there ever been a point in your music career I'm um, like when you just want to give up? Mm, yeah, of course. Of course. Um actually I did give up. And I wind up for real, like serious shit. And I wind up I ain't have nothing to do with a certain date, right? And I was like, man, I'm just go to the studio because that was like my therapy on some shit. And it's like, you gotta understand bro I've been around a lot of people, and a lot of people sold a nigga dreams on some shit. From the beats, from writing hooks for people, from co-producing for people who didn't pay you. Like, it was a lot of stuff I went through, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, this particular day, I had wrote a song, and I didn't know that the song was gonna be locally hot on some shit. And that was the Learn to Love song. So when I recorded Learn to Love, and I was a homeless man on Canal Street playing. Yeah. <laughs> I was just recording it. Just to record it for my own good. And I had posted it up on social media and everybody was like, whose song is that? Whose song is that? Whose song is that? And I was like, uh, that's my song. And uh really true learning love actually got me back in. And they played at the Pelican Bay every week for you. I mean they play everywhere. Like everywhere. I ain't gonna lie, like shots out to Nell Club Association, my boy G like like, man, see, bro, Rain Nola, everywhere you can name, club, up, up town, the ENC, man, everywhere. It was even, everywhere. Even at the second line of the float, shots out the duck. It's so many, I can't name everybody, so I don't want motherfuckers to crush me. Like, I'm sorry, but I just want to thank everybody. Like, they really, everybody really, really learned supported how to love, me. Huh? Yeah, they supported me, for real, for real. For real, for real. Even at J's. 3J was like, nigga, they rolled the red carpet out for me when I went over there. You was a celebrity, like, yeah. Hood yeah, celebrity. I was, yeah, I was a hood celebrity. <laughs> 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 they showed me love, bro, so I, I never forget that, like, for real, for real, like. Okay, so on like three years from now, I'm like, where do you see your music career going? Um, actually, I have part ownership of a record label now, me and my partner signed you. And um, I'm going to be doing, like, I'm not going to be too much doing artist stuff, like, I'm gonna be doing more of executive producing, artist development. So that's what, I'm more than sure that's what I'm gonna be. And this shit a gift, man, because I didn't choose it, it chose me. Like I told you, nigga, I was like a young 21 year old, I had a Grand Prix with some spinning rims on that motherfucker. I wanted to go get it painted. I took the paint money and went and bought a beat machine. Them niggas was looking at me like, 
the fuck you gonna do with that? Like, you gonna see? <laughs> and here we is now. We still laugh about that shit, dog. Real talk for Mardi Gras. I was going to shit for Mardi Gras. So this is me, man. Like that's that's like we're gonna be doing some big things. We, we're working on some big things right now. For real. Tell everybody. I'm like, what can they find you on social media and on other music platforms? Hey, man, y'all can find me on uh, IG, roof underscore top underscore reef R E F E. And iTunes, you can find me on Spotify. You can find me on what the other thing is again? With Jay Z, the uh, title, title, <laughs> all that. Not just you know, jigger we could, but you know, I got the iTunes. That shit come on my phone. But you can find me. Just Google it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can find me. I guarantee you know y'all get that learn to love the hottest thing in New Orleans, local single. You know, but we gonna make it out. But uh, we got a new one coming too. Teach you to love. That's like the you know how better right had uh, no pain, no gain, and after the pain, then yeah, that's what that is. But her celebrity in stores now, and her celebrity part two will be her celebrity two will be out next. Believe that. Lazine, make him scream. <laughs>